Hello, everybody, and welcome to U.S. History After School Lesson 7, where we're taking a look at the Progressive Era. Check out this awesome actual photograph of President Teddy Roosevelt defeating the mighty Sasquatch. I'm Mr. Childers, happy to be with you. Uh, this video is best viewed as part of the U.S. History After School playlist. Uh, if you don't know how to access that, just click on my name underneath the video and go to my channel, and you can access the playlist. Uh, you, as If you've been with us for a while, you'll notice I'm experimenting with... Well, basically, all I've done so far is experiment with different ways to conduct this playlist. My main priority has to be... Uh, my current students who I meet with after school, but I want to put together resources that will be beneficial to uh, my own alumni as they move on into U.S. history and prepare for their end of course exams and anyone else who might be so unfortunate as to stumble across my work. Um, this lesson follows the OpenStax textbook, the totally awesome, totally free OpenStax textbook. You can, uh, chapter 21, you can find a link to the OpenStax textbook in the description of this video. In consultation with the Florida Gateway to American, to Gateway to U.S. History textbook to ensure that all those uh, tasty, delicious Florida State U.S. History standards are met in our discussions. Um, the in um, in in our last lessons, we've been looking at massive changes going on in American society. By the way, so we're looking at the OpenStax textbook here. Don't freak out when you see these error messages pop up. The OpenStax textbook is awesome. Uh, I just happen to be using the online version without an internet connection right now. That's what the glitch is. Someday I'll figure out how to turn that off. Uh, we've been looking at major changes in the United States of America due to the explosion of industrialization, which generates wealth unlike ever before in the United States, or really ever before in the world, and also draws people from all over into American cities, people from the American farmland, uh, African Americans from the American South, and immigrants from far and wide. Uh, and we've seen that by calling this age the Gilded Age, the gold-plated age. Uh, all that luxury, all that wealth, all that conspicuous consumption is like a thin paint of gold uh, on top of a turd, as uh, Mr. Heimler of Heimler's history says, and you scratch away the gold and there's just rot and corruption underneath. Um, Rapid urban sprawl, immigration, corruption, industrial working conditions, the growth of large corporations, that's not bad. Women's rights, that's not bad, but it's very controversial. And surging anti-black violence and white supremacy in the South, that's bad. I'm still allowed to say that, even in the Sunshine State. Um, what we're looking at today in uh, the Progressive Era is reform movements seeking to address some of these problems. We know why the federal government wasn't capable of, of meaningfully addressing the problems, because in our last lesson on Gilded Age politics, we saw how weak the government was at this time. So now we're looking at grassroots campaigns to make the, the life of the United States citizen and immigrant and guest worker and everyone else better. Of course, what makes life better is going to vary from person to person. Everybody has a different opinion. And the motivations of the progressive reformers are also going to be as variant as the personalities and belief systems of people. Sometimes we'll see good intentions leading to very wrong-headed policies. Sometimes we'll see bad philosophy, such as uh, debunked racial theories, leading to positive change. 
And sometimes we'll even see, believe it or not, good intention movements leading to positive change in society. Um, the first group that deserves credit for the reforms that helped transform the turn of the Gilded Age into a much more livable country for uh, for most, if not all, are the muckracker journalists. Um, they were preceded by a group known as yellow journalists, and the yellow journalists would sometimes point to real or perceived problems in society or scandals among the wealthy, but they were doing so... Uh, I'm going to tell you one of my new favorite words. I am told it is a Puerto Rican slang for gossip. The muckraker or the yellow journalists were only interested in bochinche, in bochinche, in gossip, in sensationalized stories that sold papers. But the muckracker journalists, the muckracker journalists, uh, were those who took closer look at what was really going in society due to a genuine desire to expose what's wrong and replace wrong with wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Usually we uh, <coughs> find ways to replace wrong with more wrong, but here they're trying to replace wrong with right. Uh, in the next video in the playlist, we'll take a closer look at the muckracker journalists.